Hey guys, Rod Cleef here, host of the Lifetime Cash Flow podcast and author of How to Create Lifetime Cash Flow Through Multifamily Properties. And today I'm going to talk to you about why multifamily is better than single family. But before I do, I want to remind you of one thing. And that is 80% of your success in anything is your psychology and only 20% is the mechanics. This is the mechanics. I just did a clip last week that's on my YouTube channel about how to make 2017 your best year ever and four strategies that I've used to achieve tons of things in my life. And I really think they'll help you and that's about the psychology of success. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that for sure. All right, let's get into it. So why is multifamily better than single family? And I can tell you, speaking from experience, I'm gonna tell you why, okay? So right now there are some trends happening in multifamily that we've never seen before, some of them, okay? More people are renting than own for the first time in history, okay? Uh, rents are going up and consistently going up. Um, millennials, uh, they prefer to rent. They don't wanna be locked down. They, uh, they like to be mobile, so they're not buying. And that's a huge shift in, in really in thought process for, the, for people in the United States. Um, and we're doing so well that other countries are copying us as to our multifamily strategy, our financing, things of that nature. And a lot of people from, a lot of investors from foreign countries are actually coming here to buy multifamily property. Um, and there is and always will be a huge need for affordable housing. So if you're in that sector in multifamily, you're pretty much golden. Uh, so let's get into some other, some other statistics here. So right now, like I said, there's a record number uh, of renters, literally 42 million renter households in 2015. You know, and there's some other interesting statistics. Four million people are 70 plus. And they, they're typically renting as well if they've sold their primary residence. There's 6.9 million single parents and uh, 9.6 million with a household income of less than $15,000 a year. They have a desperate need for affordable housing. 4.8 million people receiving assistance, rental assistance. So some pretty staggering statistics. Now I'm not gonna bore you with too many charts. There's a few of them in here, so just hang with me, but this is important information for you to know if you're considering getting involved in multifamily investing. So here's the home ownership rate for the United States. Look at this. It peaked in 2005, but it has fallen off a cliff since then, okay? And these people have to live somewhere. So they may as well live in your multifamily properties, right? All right. So here's the rent growth uh, in uh, the United States. Here's another statistic in what's happened in in rent growth by city. Huge growth in Austin, Sacramento, Portland, San Francisco, my alma mater, Denver. So lots of growth in the rental markets. So we're becoming a nation of renters. That's it, that's the bottom line. In the past 10 years, like I say, homeownership's dropped by over 10%. Mar this is interesting, marriage has dropped by 25%. Since 1960, more single people equal more renters. Um, affordable rents are needed. Uh, over 50% of the people aged 18 to 23 still live at home. Isn't that interesting? Um, graduates from 2015 have the most student debt in history. Don't get me started on student debt. To me, it's a travesty what's going on with that. But, you know, average being over $35,000 owed by student, uh, in student debt. And 2016 graduates are going to owe $40,000 in student debt. And it's horrible debt, you can't get out of it. But uh, an estimated 12 million renter and homeowner households now paying more than 50% of their annual income for housing. Okay, think about that for a minute. Out of every dollar they get, 50 cents goes just to live in their, to just rent in their house. So some pretty sobering statistics. And they're, they're not going away. In affordable housing, there's a huge increased demand, like I said. Um, and, and the U.S. needs 400,000 units a year just to keep up with the demand. And this is a sobering statistic. Household incomes have not kept pace with rental costs. So the, the blue line is rents going up. The yellow line is household income down 7%. Rents are up 4%. Household income is down 7%. And again, I don't want to bore you with a lot of statistics, but I just want to hammer my point home. We are becoming a nation of renters, okay? Um, and there's a huge um, 
mismatch between rental supply and demand. You know, uh, vacancy rates are at a 30-year low, okay? That's staggering. And rents are still increasing at a record pace. And, you know, low-income households are really feeling the crunch. So this slideshow will be in your notes below, so you can, you can look at this a little closer, but hopefully you're getting the message. I mean, rents are going up, renters are not going away. This is a solid, solid investment. Now, let's talk about houses versus multifamily, okay? Those of you, may or, you may or may not know my story. You know, I've owned 2,000 houses, multiple apartment communities in three states, and when 2008 hit, I had 800 houses here in Florida. And because of the high cost of taxes, high cost of insurance, um, and high turnover in the, in the lower priced houses that I had, when 08 happened, I lost it all. I lost all the houses. But what was fascinating is my multifamily did just fine through all that. Yeah, we had some contraction, but they survived it. And, you know, there is another contraction coming because, you know, real estate goes up and down. It goes in cycles. I've been through three of them. And... You know, hopefully this next one won't be as bad as 08 was, but it's, it's going to happen. It's going to drop, and I, that's not something to be fearful of. It's an opportunity. With crisis comes opportunity, and there, when the contraction happens, if you've studied this multifamily business and understand it, and you're poised, ready to go, there's going to be incredible opportunities to buy properties. But again, because of what happened to me with my 800 houses here in Florida, and you know, really the, the rug being pulled out from under me, and then seeing that my multifamily did okay. That's why I started my podcast, and that's why I'm doing this, and, and I, wanna, I want you guys to get the memo, and that is, if you're buying and holding, if you're buying real estate to hold on to, not, I'm not gonna talk, you know, we're not talking about wholesaling or flipping right now, which I think is a, gr a great way to make quick cash, but if you're talking about buying and holding, do multifamily. Don't do single family for a lot of reasons. And I'm going to go into them, okay? So here's one. If you have a house and it's vacant, you are 100% empty, okay? If you have a 10-unit building and somebody moves out, one unit, you're 10% vacant. Typically, if you have even just a plex, duplex, triplex, fourplex, and you, use a, you lose a resident, in many cases, you can still cover your payment. I mean, that's huge, okay? And that's why I tell my listeners and people that call me, you know, especially uh, people that haven't bought a home yet, they're, they're into their first property. I say, buy a duplex, buy a triplex, buy a fourplex, move in one unit, rent the other units, and you're, you've started your, your investment strategy. It's a great way to get started. So anyway, I digress for a minute. They are, I'm not gonna say recession proof. I probably should have said something a little different on that headline because yeah, some apartments won't make it through recessions as well. But if you buy right with, with just a little bit of common sense, apartments typically weather recessions where many times single family houses don't. Certainly in my case, they didn't, okay? You know, I sit and think about buying 2,000 houses and my brain feels like it's going to explode. I could have done it so much easier. And that's what I'm hoping to, you know, for you to get. And I know this one better than anybody, or better than most, let's put it that way. Buying houses one at a time, which is how I bought. I bought 2,000 houses one at a time. I didn't buy bulk packages. It takes a very long time and it takes a lot of work. It is much easier to achieve your goals with multifamily, particularly if you're, if you're looking for cash flow. For example, let's say you want $100,000 in annual income in, you know, from your real estate business. And, and let's just use $200 cash flow per unit as a barometer, which is fairly common in a lot of areas of the country. That, so $2,400 per year cash flow per unit. You tracking me? $200 per month times 12, 2,400 cash flow per unit per year. You need 42 units to achieve your goal. So what's easier, buying one 40-unit building or buying 21 duplexes or 42 single-family houses? And I have to, I have to tell you, it's, it's definitely, I'm not going to say easier, but pretty much as easy to buy a 42-unit as it is to buy a house, particularly if you know what you're doing. And all you have to do is learn this business. And, and you know, it's just a learning curve. That's it. So, you know, I wish I'd gotten this memo. Seriously, because this is so much easier. And here's something else that's 
huge when it comes to multifamily properties. Now, I want to I want to give you a little education here. Two to four units, duplex, triplex, fourplex. That's considered residential multifamily. And the big advantage there, like I just said, for anybody that's just getting started in real estate to buy, is you can get residential financing, very low cost financing, low interest rate, low down payment fully amortized loan where you, you don't have a balloon payment, fantastic loans on residential multifamily. But five plus units is commercial and what's exciting, commercial multifamily. What's exciting about five plus units is you control the value. And the way you do is any increase in your income increases the value of the property. Now, I, I'm not gonna get into all the specifics. It's really net operating income, which is your gross income, less your expenses is your net operating income. And if you improve that net operating income by raising the income or lowering the expenses, you exponentially improve the value. And I'm gonna give you an example in a second. With single family, everything is based on comparable sales. Single family and honestly, residential multifamily, two, four, two, two-plex, two-fourplex, the value is based on comparable sales. But with multifamily, you're in control because like I said, every dollar you add in income or decrease in expenses adds to the value of the property. And so houses are based on values of other properties, which is, which is um, subjective. But five plus apartments are based on the NOI, net operating income, which, which is concrete and real and something you control, okay? Through a lot of, lot, of, lot of ways you can control that. So here's a fantastic example of the exponential impact of a rent increase, okay? Let's say you have a 100 unit building and you raise the rents $20 a month, okay? Pretty reasonable rent increase. Or you decrease the expenses. Maybe you bill back the utilities or something as an example. If you've just increased the yearly NOI by $24,000, okay? 100 units, you do the math, 20 times 12 times 100, it's 24,000. You tracking me? Okay, at a six cap, now, cap rate is a multiple that's used to value multifamily properties. And I'm not going to get into the details of that right now, but just trust me, this is, this is real. This formula is real. Add a six cap, and the lower the cap rate, the higher the value. And a six cap is pretty standard in a 100-unit building right now, unless it's a real crappy property. You just increase the value $400,000 with a $20 rent increase. Yeah, I mean, I hope you got that. $20 rent increase raised the value $400,000 on a 100-unit building. Hopefully that got you excited. It gets me excited. All right, now here's another reason why multifamily is better than single family. Because you can typically outsource the management. You know, when I was managing 800 houses, and I'm, in, I'm pointing because uh, this, I'm in my house right now, and that's south and that's north. I, was, I went two hours that way uh, with houses, and I went two hours that way with houses, okay? You can imagine the logistics of that, okay? And, and managing that because you have to show those houses. And, and even if you're in just a metropolitan area driving, you know, different places to show houses, it's a pain. And people stand you up, they, you know, it's, it's a pain. And then, then you talk about the logistics of, uh, you know, doing the inspections, showing the, the like I said, the, the maintenance. It's, it's, a, it's, it's logistically a real hassle. But if all your units are in one place, there's so many benefits to that, okay? So, but, but back to management. You can hire on-site management if you've got multifamily. Even if you only have a 10 unit, you can, Give some, one of the residents a discount on the rent to keep an eye on things for you. And typically you can afford to pay a management fee and not get you know, taken uh, versus you know, paying a management fee on a single family, single family home. The economies of scale are much better, okay? Now I personally self-manage everything, but definitely larger multifamily allows you to hire full-time on-site management, okay? But even in the smaller, like I just described, you have one of the residents keep an eye on things, show units, things like that, and it, and it works very, very well. Okay, and, and, and it becomes a very passive investment compared to houses. Houses are work, okay? Now, the financing is much easier. If you buy 20 houses, you need to work with 20 different lenders and appraisers, but if you buy 20 unit building, you do it one time, much easier. And there are a lot of other reasons that, 
the financing can be easier with multifamily, one, one, le one least of which is you basically can put a team together and if your financial situation isn't strong enough to buy a property, you, you can partner up with somebody and buy multifamily. It's done all the time. And it's the strength of the team, the experience of the team that allows you to buy versus you personally. Single family homes are more expensive to manage. I just talked about that. I mean, much more expensive because I was talking about how hard it is to lease and how hard it is to inspect regularly and the, let me tell you about the maintenance. Now, you wouldn't think about this, but when you have a maintenance guy that's going out to a property, they have to go there to see what it needs. They can't really tell by a phone call from the tenant. They have to go and look. So they go and see what happens. Then they have to go drive to the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your uh, home improvement supplier is, pick up the parts, go back, do the work. Um, and, and it takes a ton of time and that time costs money. Uh, believe me, I know. And every system, if you have a bunch of different houses, every one of them is different. They have different plumbing parts. They have different, different systems, furnace, HVAC, uh, lighting fixtures. It's all different. But if you buy like a 10-unit building, typically whoever built that will have everything the same. So you can stockpile parts. And the, your maintenance guy is going to one place. If you've got some parts stockpiled, they don't have to go anywhere. It's much less expensive. I, I mean, you get that, the common sense of that. Um, so much less expensive to manage. Multifamilies designed for easy management, right. Whether two or 20 units, much simpler to manage. Your on-site manager or, like I said, discounted tenant can show the units and be the face of the property, you know, all in one location. It's designed for easier leasing. I mean, that's common sense and having all your units in one location. I mean, you can compare showing and leasing 100 different houses uh, compared to 250 unit buildings. Less driving, less costs. And like I said, the ability to have somebody on site to help you do that. I mean, it sounds like a little thing, but this is a big thing. When, and any of you that already have some houses know this. It's a, it's a hassle to go drive and meet and all that. And so this is much easier. And it's all about cutting costs, okay? This is all about improving the bottom line for you because that's why you're doing this for the cash flow, for the monthly revenue. Again, maintenance is much easier. I talked about this already, got ahead of myself. You, can, you can't stock parts it with single family houses. It's impossible. Believe me, I know. Or I would have if I could have. Uh, so, you know, they're spending their, the maintenance techs or your contractors are spending time driving back and forth and that equates to money. Now, let's say you've got 50 houses. Uh, believe me, I know this one too. I had hundreds of houses thousands, two, you know, 2,000. Try to sell a bulk package of houses. Very, very hard, okay? There's only a handful of people that are interested. So, you know, you either, you either find that one of those people or you have to sell them one at a time. It takes a long, long time, believe me, I know, versus a 50-unit building in this case. 50 houses versus a 50-unit building. Huge difference when, you, when it's time to cash out if you need to cash out. Now, let's talk about another reason with multifamily houses. One of the biggest reasons is tax benefits, exponential. Now, I'm only going to mention one of them, which is, and there are numerous ones. Anybody that owns a lot of real estate doesn't pay taxes. I mean, why do you think the wealthiest people in the world own real estate? Because it, it mitigates all their taxes. This is huge, cost segregation. This allows you to accelerate your depreciation. I was looking at a $350,000 tax bill last year, and I did some cost segregation, and I got money back. Okay? That's the power of accelerating your depreciation, and it's done through cost segregation. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail, but basically, in, in, in real layman's terms, you take every component in the house, and you put a, a useful life to it, and you accelerate the depreciation, which is the, one of the biggest benefits with real estate ownership, and so you, you increase it. Like, let's say, um, you know, your electrical fixtures only have a 10-year life versus the 20 years you get on uh, the, typically in straight-line depreciation. And I don't want to make your eyes cross, but, you know, you, you deal with an accountant that helps you do this and maybe an engineer. It doesn't cost a ton of money, but it saves you a ton of money. And like I was telling you previously, your financial situation doesn't matter because you buy and borrow based on the strength of your team. Okay? So you put a team together. You go to your local RIA meetings. You meet people that you know, have purchased multifamily property already and you put a team together. You can bring in a sponsor. A sponsor is kind of like a co-signer in a way, but they're, they're coming in as the face of your team. They've already purchased property or own property or managed property like you're trying to buy. They have some financial strength. 
course, they're going to get a chunk of the deal, which is okay because it's better to get a, per, a, a certain percent of something versus 100% of nothing. But, uh, you know, it's a great way to get started, fantastic way to get started. Many, many people get started in this business by using a sponsor or putting a team together to build that financial strength and experience. Loans and loans are based on how well the property does, not how well Rod does or you do. So that's a huge plus. And, and it takes the same amount of work to obtain a loan for five units as it does for 50 units. So you can get exponential scale. Okay, you can go for larger properties. You put the team together. You, you, if, you, if you don't have the money yourself, you, maybe you do a syndication and put the money together and you can take down larger units. It's done every day. You can syndicate, like I said. And there's higher and more stable returns. And that allows you to pool investors together and do a syndication, like I said here, because investors love it. This is one of the safest, most exciting and lucrative sectors in real estate, in investing, period. Let's say you're wholesaling. And I love wholesaling for guys that don't have any money, guys or ladies that don't have any money that need to make some money so they can invest it in multifamily. Consider wholesaling multifamily instead of just houses. Average house wholesale is somewhere between the fee that you make by flipping a contract. That's what wholesaling is. You're flipping a contract. You, you put a house under contract, you sell that contract to, to an end user, a flipper or a, a, a landlord, and you make somewhere in a house somewhere between 2,500 and I will say 7,000. You can make a little more than 5,000. But the average apartment wholesale is over 10,000. I know somebody made 100,000 flipping an apartment. So bigger numbers if you're wholesaling. Here's another huge one, and this, this is the, the last one really, and I hope you guys are getting the memo on this. Multifamily is fantastic. Seller financing is common because these properties are held by investors. They're not held by people that are living in them. So, you know, a lot of times these investors don't want to, they want to maximize their tax benefits, so they don't want all the cash at once. So it's very easy to convince them to give you seller financing, which is fantastic because you can get into the properties for less money. You can... You don't have to deal with a bank. Uh, you, you, know, you, can get, you can set up terms that are very attractive. So anyway, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I've convinced you to take a hard look at multifamily versus just single family. Use the single family to make the money to buy multifamily. I'm Rod Cleef, wishing you incredible passion and massive success in your business, your real estate career, and in your life.